morning, amen. Let's, let's, can I invite everyone there? Sit in the back to move forward a little bit, you know, so we can fill it up the first contra row. Yes, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus, amen. We want to praise Him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church, the up our
everybody there is so much joy it's okay to laugh and smile we can have fun when we worship right <laughs> thank you Jesus Holy Spirit we welcome in your presence today we welcome you in come and rest on each and every one of us Holy Spirit we invite you to come and and rest on each and every one of our lives and today we just want to praise and worship the one who is worthy worthy of every single melody hallelujah hallelujah father we have come to bow down in worship Lifting up our hearts, we bow down in prayer.
and we rest on this truth holy are you holy oh just think about what it means that he is holy greater than any other thing he is holy and so worthy of our praise so worthy of our melody Addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Oh, come on, prophesy over your life.
chat with a friend this week, and he's dealing with a son who's having mental health issues, and uh, when that song was played, I spoke Jesus over the son's name, Jonathan. So much of mental health, if not all, is demonic, demonically inspired, and I just wonder if you know, we know, if you're standing there and you're singing that sang it over and over. Do you know someone 
that needs the name of Jesus spoken over them? Do you know a family member? Do you know a family like I know a family that has someone in their family who is who needs that name, the all-powerful name? If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, and this is the witness of God that he has sent his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. So, Father God, we just speak that again and again and again. There is no greater power than the power of the name of Jesus. Every demon must flee. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we are believers here and now. Eternity began when it's long begun, Lord Jesus. And we are to be lights. We are to be Jesus doing the works, actually greater works, will we do because you gave us your gift of the Holy Spirit. And the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within us. Father, we speak Jesus over the demonically tormented today in our families, in our loved ones, in our friends, Lord Jesus. The name of Jesus, for the ones who don't know even how to proclaim it, we proclaim Jesus. You know no bounds, Father. You know no bounds. Your presence, Lord Jesus. We just thank you. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. You're incredible. And let that revelation of how great you are be in us and be unleashed May we give room and yield to the Holy Spirit that that name above every name would flow through us in might and in power. We pray and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, on this Christmas Christmas Eve day. If you know how to give good gifts, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So baptize us afresh today, Father God. We need it. We leak. Our shadow's not healing the sick yet, Lord. The lame are still lame many times. You want to see all of your your majesty through us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Reach out and touch somebody and tell them Merry Christmas. only been said 20 times so far, but I'll say it again. Merry Christmas! At the school, we went through four concerts within a matter of a week and a half, all the way from preschool to high school. And it's a really amazing thing to sit in front or stand in front, because I opened them and and greet the people. I consider it an incredible uh, evangelistic opportunity. But it's amazing how, you know, we know the world, and it's even more prevalent now they want to push Christ out of Christmas. But when you get a, a group of people and you're able to tell them that and, you're, and they're there for their most precious possession on the face of this earth, their child in our school. And um, what an amazing, amazing opportunity. I just share a personal testimony. It was, there was uh, my last, one of my last meetings was a one-on-one with a young man, uh, has a couple of kids in our school. And uh, I was able to share Christ with him. He, he prayed with his daughter often. And then when I had a time to get one-on-one, um, he said, I have a Catholic background, and, and I, I'm a very logical guy. And he went on and on, and he knew of God. And I told him, I just gave him a little brief testimony. I was a C and an E before I found the Lord. I grew up in a church, but I, got, I went away. But I was a Christmas and an Easter guy. And I told him my testimony when a man shared the gospel message and then asked a simple question after it. He said, if you were to die right now, could you say without a shadow of a doubt that you'd be going to heaven? And I could not say that. I couldn't say it. I was a churchgoer before, 
My parents were saved, but I wasn't. And I just shared that little testimony with him. And then I went on a few moments, and, and I said, what's that do in your heart? I asked him, I said, what, what kind of, do you have, because I could sense there was some stirring in his heart. And we just prayed that, uh, we, we prayed together. I said, you want to pray that Jesus comes into your life, that you know, that you know, that you know? And he says, yes, I do. And what a, what a privilege and what a great ending to the, the year to be able to be that with the parents, because that's what I'm in education for. I'm, that education to me is, is the bait. You know, it's, it's just, it's the, it's the hook. And uh, the real thing is salvation. Because you can get them to Harvard, Yale, and all the greatest schools, and they go straight to hell and not know Christ. And maybe today you're a C or E. You're here because it's a C. Mine was Easter. And uh, you won't, before you leave here today, you'll have a chance to change that. And, and uh, I'm sure you will. But anyway. A couple of announcements. There's no video announcements, so I'm it. It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> or any worse. <laughs> it's either a blessing or whatever. <laughs> this is the last day for contributions, slash get, the last day for contributions for giving. So they'll be in the 2023 tax year will be next Sunday. So at the end of your giving, check your, check your checkbook, see what your priorities are, make sure that you've given God what's due him so that he can bless all the rest, right? Uh, we're going to receive our tithe and offering this morning. And I've got one thing to say. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Whew. Second Corinthians chapter 9, I believe it is. Even the word grudgingly is hard to say. Grudgingly. It doesn't come out easy, does it? Grudgingly. Ooh, they're just like sandpaper. <laughs> you know? Grudgingly. Isn't that hard to say? You couldn't even sing that, could you? So, Lord, you love a cheerful giver. We've got some cheerful givers in this house, Father God. So, because we can't outgive you, Father. You say to test you in the tithe if you do not open up the storehouses of heaven and pour out a blessing until there's no more need. So, Lord, I just pray this morning that we will increase in our cheerful giving, our delight. One of the translations, Lord, is, is hilarious. Hilariously giving. And that you don't get hilarious unless you are free of any care and you're total trusting in the Father to provide. So, Father God, I thank you for all that you've bestowed. In this time tomorrow, we will have given gifts. But, Lord, you are so faithful, and every day you give of yourself every single day. And we, if we're in you, we will lack nothing. So, Lord, we give cheerfully today for your glory. We exalt your name, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you give. Online, text, checks, or zell. privilege now, besides the video of introducing our hero, Pastor Paul Tan, <laughs> precious man of God. Thank you, Glenn. Praise the Lord. Jesus is our hero. Amen. I'm just... Uh, just like you, happen to be a pastor. Praise the Lord. God is good, amen? I've been praying and uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you are here. I'm, I'm honored to see all of you here and some of you were here last night and we had this, this powerful production and for those of you that didn't come last night, I want to encourage you to, to come tonight at five o'clock and uh, we will celebrate Christmas together. Amen. Bring your friends and uh, bring your neighbors. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want to wish all of you again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Why, why don't you all stand up and greet one another and say Merry Christmas. God is good. God is good to all of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe God has a special word for each and every one of us. And even for me, myself, as I prepare the word, as I spend time in prayer, the words that I've read so many times and the words that at times I've preached several times, or, well, quite many times over the past 35 years, it begins to speak life again to me. And as we focus this month, as our church focused this month on the topic of the glory of God, the, the topic that I want to share to you today is glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And um, as I spend time meditating who God is, and when we are talking about the glory of God, I realize, and I hope you all realize, that it is very, very difficult. And I would say it is impossible to really fathom the glory of God. With all the preaching, the brief preaching that we have shared, that we have preached in the past three weeks, it just touched the service of who God is. Who God is to you, who God is to, to everybody all around the world. And uh, I short circuit in my finite mind when I consider that there are over 8 billion people all around the world in this planet called Earth, okay? And God knows every one of them by name intimately. That means God knows each and every one of you intimately by name. And He is acquainted with all your ways, with all their ways. And He can answer every prayers that is prayed to Him, not to other gods, okay? And He keep the world spinning and keep the universe in place, it boggles my mind that He can be every place at once. I just short circuit. At one point, you know, when I read the Bible, when I find, I found a chapter in the book of Psalm chapter 139, when David said, I cannot attain it. I cannot attain it anymore. It's just, God, you are so, so, so great. He's so great. He is omniscient. What does it mean? He knows everything. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about your life. He knows everything about your, your, your triumph, your struggle, your tragedies. He knows. And uh, He is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. That is what it means. He is all-powerful. And he is, he is omnipresent, which means He is everywhere all at once. He is everywhere all at once. He is God. He is God in your triumph. And He is there. He is always there. He is also God in your tragedies. He is, he is God when you are bored. When you feel like your life is boring. You don't know what to do. It's just like, um, oh, what is next? I don't know. But He is also the God of your, when you are in victory. He is, he is amazing. So I want all of us right now to bow our hearts and heads in prayer. And those of you who are joining online, you can also join us in this prayer. Father, I pray right now, I declare, and I just declare today over all of us, over all of you here present, all of you online, joining online, that the powerful name of Jesus is going to be working in our life. Your presence, oh God, your presence has filled our life and filled our hearts. And I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that today, today, yes, even though, even though some of our brothers, sisters, friends, they are going to join tonight in the service, oh God, but I declare that every one of us will encounter you. We will experience you more than just knowing about you. But God, we will encounter you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And those of you who agree with my prayer, you can say aloud, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I want to begin by sharing to you and reading to you this 
verses from the book of Matthew chapter 2. And I'm going to read uh, the verses from 1 to 12. And then we are going to go back again to read from two or three verses, four verses at once. And then I'll try to unpack it. Is that all right with you? All right. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that um, Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men, astrologers, that is what it is, from the east came, from, came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Verse 3, it says, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled. He was troubled. Who was Herod? Herod? Herod was the king. And not only that he was a king at the time, he was troubled when, we, when he heard this news. And not only him, it says all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes, all the people of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was born. And then verse 5, it says, so they said to him in Bethlehem, they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler, ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them that what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search. I would say, Go and search for me. Go and search for me. But I myself, I'm not going to search. Why don't you search for me carefully for the young child? And when you have found him, bring back the word to me that I may come and worship him also. There is a difference between when the, uh, when the shepherd get, a, get an announcement from angels, from the angel and the host of the heavenly armies, and when the angels visited where baby Jesus was, be, Jesus was in the manger. But when the wise men got the star, got the sign, they did not come to a manger, they come to a house. And they came to see Jesus as a child, not a baby. He's about two years old. And we will look at this verse later when we unpack it. And then verse 9, it says, when they, had heard the, when they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star, which they, had be, which they had seen in the east, went before him. Wow, it seems like it is a moving star. Till it came and stood over where the young child, again, young child, not baby, okay, where the young child was, when they saw the star, they rejoiced and exceedingly, with exceedingly great joy. So, uh, before we continue, is there great joy in the house? Yes. Is there great joy in the house? Yes. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. Thank you, Lord. Give Jesus a shout. Thank you, Jesus. Can you shout? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you, Lord. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when, they had opened, and, and, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Verse 12. Then, being divinely warned in the dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way, another way. That is the verses that I want to share to you, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will help me to unpack this. First off, we need to understand who are these Magi. The Magi, they were Persians. That's modern-day Iran right now. And... Um, could it be possible, you know, that this 
Magi's, this astrologers, astrologers, they see stars all the time. They study stars. They are astrologers. They see the stars. So it is just, it is, it is common. They see stars all the time, but this star is different. This star is, is different than just another massive of stars in the universe. So let me ask you this question. Could it be, could it be that um, we have gotten so accustomed to looking for the spectacular that we miss the supernatural on ordinary things? Is it possible? Because these magi, they look at stars all the time, but this time it is different. What does it have to do with us today? One of the things that hinder us from knowing and experiencing and encountering God is because we get familiar spirit. Oh, I know about that. Oh, yeah, it's Christmas season. Oh, I know that verse. I know it, it was preached. I know that. So could it be possible that we miss experiencing the presence of God, experiencing the glory of God because, because we are looking for the spectacular while God is using the ordinary things to show the supernatural things. So I pray today as I continue, please open your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you again today in a deeper way like never before. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. So about this Magi again, do you know how long, do you know how long it would take to walk from Iran, in, from Tehran to Jerusalem? Yeah, they may not walk, they may ride uh, camels, but the distance is about 1,800 miles. 1,800 miles. So when we're talking about searching, searching, this is serious business. They search. They search. So uh, 1,800 miles, it took them almost two years, almost two years to come and see the child. And yet, in our life today, many times we kept giving up because some of the things, some of the things that we prayed for didn't come by Friday. Jesus. I learned that their search can, some, can somebody say search? Their search, their search, they, they, they search, they search, they search. How many of you have been searching? How many of you have been asking question? If God is real, show yourself to me, Lord. Have you been searching? Have, been, have you been searching? And if you are searching seriously, I believe that your search, your searching is to find an answer, to find an answer. There are people out there, they just, they say, I search, I search, but not to find an answer. Why are you searching if you don't, if you are not interested to find an answer? And uh, when the Magi, when the Magi came to Jerusalem and when they met Herod, this is what I learned from this context here. <laughs> Herod was troubled and all Jerusalem was troubled. It is interesting that Herod the king, he was not a, uh, a good king. He, he was under Rome and he persecuted the believers. He controlled the city and uh, he, he was not a good man. But when he heard about the king, about a king that was born, he was troubled. And guess what? He called, he called for the chief priests. And he called for the scribes. 
He didn't call for the scientist. He didn't call for a lawyer. He didn't call for the, the smart people at the time. No, he called for the scribes, the priests. Why? Because somehow, somehow at the time, I believe that Herod, deep down in his heart, he knew that we can only find the answer if I go and ask the priest and the scribes because they can find the answer in the Word, in the Bible. So if you are looking for an answer, it has been here. It has been here all the time. And God is going to speak to us again, a rhema, a living word, a quickening word right now. So when Herod inquired from the priests and from the scribes, is there such, such a thing? And guess what? What the priest said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We found it. In fact, it was prophesied some 760 years ago. Almost 800 years ago, it was prophesied. It was prophesied that a king is coming. So I want you to know that whatever you are struggling, whatever you are searching right now, God has already planned a good plan for you, and it is in the Word. It is in the written Word of God. Just search. If you search me, the Bible says, with all your heart, if you search me like, like you are searching for silver, if you are searching, if you are seeking search and search like you are searching for gold, you will find me. You will find me. Oh, praise the Lord. So this priest and the scribe, they said, oh, yeah, about almost 800 years ago, that in Judea, in a place called Bethlehem, to the, uh, there is a place, a very, very simple place, a very simple place, and uh, the king would come to the most least, to the oppressed, to the disadvantaged people. The king would come to that place. I pray that the Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us right now. Because at church, usually, you all look fine. But deep down, you, you face challenges that you have been praying for, for an answer, but you don't have it yet. I don't know what it is, but God knows because He is omniscient. He knows everything. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the priest and the scribes says, there's going to come one who become the savior of the world. Oh, wow. So Christmas, Christmas is not about how privileged we are. It's not about how privileged people have a lot of toys under there are three. The Christmas story is about how a lot of people, a lot of people who sat in darkness saw the light. Christmas is about how people who were living in oppression, who were oppressed, they were oppressed in many different places, all of a sudden found freedom in their life. That is Christmas story about because God comes for the least. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> Another thing that I learned, I felt like today I don't need to preach long. But I pray that you all will encounter Jesus. The Bible says that, this is very interesting. When they got, when the Magi, when these astrologers, the influencers, the influencers, they were known as uh, kingmakers, they have authority. 
Can you ever imagine why why Herod was was troubled? Because these magi, they come with the whole entourage, and they are ready to just topple any kingdom because they are kingmakers. That's why when Herod heard about this news, he was troubled, and not only Herod. Again, all Jerusalem was troubled. But these magi, with all the authorities they, that, that they came, with all the powers, with all the entourage, they came to worship the King of Kings. And the Bible said that when they got, when these magi got to where the child was, the first thing they did, oh God, the first thing they did was they fell down. And they worship him. They fell down and they worship him. Keep in mind that you need to understand who were these magi. They were men that were used to being bowed to. People bowed to them, and all of a sudden, when they saw the child, all of a sudden they fell down. They bowed themselves. So when we are talking about the the glory of God, about glory to God in the highest, oh Lord, we pray again. I pray even as I'm preaching right now. I pray that all of you you will encounter Him today in a deeper way, in a special way, in a unique way like never before. Oh God, they fell down and they worship. They worship. They worship. They worship. Oh, and they give him the glory and the honor that was due to Jesus. Oh God, could it be possible that if you want to experience, I say experience. Can you say experience? What does it mean? You encounter not just to know about Jesus, not just to know about God, but if you want to encounter Him, it is not enough just to have a head knowledge. You know the story. No, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to unpack, to make you understand, to make you see again. What is it? Because the the Pharisees they know about the word, they memorize the word, they memorize Torah. So if you are bragging that you memorize uh, 50 verses or 100 verses uh, compared to the Pharisees, we are nothing. They memorize the word, but the Bible says that the word, the word became flesh. The word, the word became flesh. The word is Jesus. The word is Jesus. Oh, when the word manifests in the flesh, these magi, they reposture themselves. They humble themselves and they they all bow down. They worship as if they were saying. All the authority that we got, all the power that we got, all the influence that we got, is nothing. And I want to experience. We want to experience. And if you want to experience God, could it be possible that today you need to humble yourself, reposture yourself? I don't know who you are. I don't know. Maybe people respect you, and that is good. This magi people, they they bow to them, but they when when they came to see the child Jesus, they bow themselves. Could it be possible that many of you cannot experience God because you are too too proud? To humble yourself, whatever it is, probably because you know the word, probably because you 
you have been a Christian for a long time, probably because of your financial condition or probably because of whatever, whatever. Could it be possible that God is using the natural things? Could it be possible that God is using a lot of people to speak to you? Could it be possible that there has been signs after signs after signs and God has been speaking to us, God has been speaking to you personally, individually. Remember I told you that He is omniscient. He knows you individually. He knows you intimately. Could it be possible that He has been sending signs and signs after signs to speak to you in the natural, in the ordinary way and you missed it? Could it be that God used your spouse to speak to you? Could it be that God used your parents or your children to speak to you or a situation or your boss or your acquaintance? God has been trying to speak and speak and speak and speak. But because we are too preoccupied with so many things, even though we know that God came to the very small, insignificant village to touch the least, the last, and the lost, but because we don't pay attention, we got carried away with so many things. But not this Magi. They worship. They worship. And the last thing it says they opened their treasures and they presented gifts. This is so powerful. They worship him and they opened their, their, can you say their, their treasures. That means they have treasures, right? Do you know that there is a treasure inside of you? Do you know that you are special? Do you know that you are loved? Do you know that Jesus died on the cross because he loves you? Because the treasure is you. And there is a treasure inside of you. And that won't make sense until you get to Jesus. Some of you feel like, oh, life is boring. It's just over and over again and uh, whatever it is, it's just like, oh... I'm nothing, I'm a failure, I make mistakes, I fell into sin and whatever, whatever, but uh, I pray that today you will encounter Jesus. When you get to Jesus, you can open your treasures and you give yourself, your heart to Him. The Bible says, Herod the king said to them, Herod the king says to the Magi, when you find him, come, tell me, come back, tell me, and I will come to worship too. Let me just say this to you. If you won't be a part of the search, you will never be a part of the worship. If you are not willing to search for him, you won't be worshiping him. If you are not willing to inconvenience yourself to go after him, you would not encounter him. But I pray today, as I made a declaration in my prayer earlier today, that you will encounter Jesus in a deeper way. And that is also for me. I want to know Him more. I want to know Him more. And it says, they departed for their own country another way. So when you encounter Jesus, you don't go home the same way. 
When you encounter Jesus, your life doesn't stay the same. Yeah. Last night, during the uh, Hope Was Born production, I got the privilege to to meet a friend that we haven't met for years, and I've known him for over 40 years. And uh, something that he said touched me. He said, wow, Pastor Paul, you are you're different. It is not because I'm special, because I learn and I'm still learning to yield to the Holy Spirit. How about you? Glory to God in the highest. Do you know that God is willing to share, to come to you in a personal way? Yeah, the glory of God is so, it is impossible to to be described in <laughs> in words so powerful there is a a big difference between the omnipresent of God and the manifest presence of God which I will continue next week and I don't want you to miss that message God wants to reveal himself to you and uh, this is what God is saying to a world that is in chaos right now. And the Lord himself, not only he will give you a sign, but he has been giving you sign after sign after sign after sign. Job, Job said, for indeed God speaks to men in many different ways but men do not perceive it well let's pray are you okay let's pray let's pray right now as I pray earlier today that um, I pray that you all will encounter God. You will experience the presence of God. I shared in the past couple of weeks that the glory of God is the presence of God. And I want you, if, if you are just willing, if you are just willing to, to welcome Jesus, and uh, if you would say, very, very, very simple, very simple. I don't know who you are. I, I don't know where your position in Christ is right now. If you don't know Jesus personally, I want you to pray with me. How about if you know, if you do know Christ, you already know Jesus. I also want to pray for you because um, I believe God is still showing you signs because signs is, is meant to give you direction in your life, whatever you need. Probably you have been trying to approach God and search for more than you have ever had. I want to pray with you today. And if you would respond, how, how would I respond, Pastor? It's very simple. You can just say, Father, Heavenly Father, I want to submit to you. Father, I want, to, I want to yield to you. So many times, even, even so many believers that have been going to church for years, so many times we sit on the throne of our life and not Jesus. Are you hearing me? How many of you today even right now, you can say, oh, Lord, um, I, 
I do know Christ, but I realize today that I am still on the throne of my life. And I have not allowed Jesus to rule and reign. Jesus, the Bible says that he is a ruler. He will rule our life in a good way. So, I, I want to pray for you. Why don't you just, just bow your hearts and bow your heads. Would you say, Jesus, I, I give you my, my life. I give you my life. Oh, God. That can, if you want a, a, a transformed life, that can happen for you. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Oh, Rabayata Sikia Daba. It may be that you need God to open doors for what that's, that's, for, that's never been opened before. Probably you're, you've been praying for that. Oh, God. Probably you want to, you are, you're tired of certain things that have been going on in your life. Or something that has been going on in your mind. Yeah, in your mind, yeah, you, you're struggling with these thoughts. And uh, I don't try to oversimplify it, but indeed I can say to you that the Holy Spirit is real. And if you would just say, I want to yield to you, Lord. I want to yield to you. And again, if you, if you don't know Jesus personally, wherever you are sitting right now, and uh, maybe you're joining online, I want you to just pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I, I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you into my life. Forgive me. And... Uh, Sanctify me, make me holy, make me clean. And Father, I pray right now for those of you that, that you do know Christ, but you're praying for open doors, you're praying for a deeper experience. You want to experience it more, you want to, you want to experience the, the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. And... Uh, just, just pray this prayer. Lord, I want to yield myself. I want to get down from my throne of life and you be my Lord and Savior. This Christmas, if you want to experience glory to God in the highest, Jesus is not only your Savior, He is your Lord. Oh, Jesus. Make a decision today. Make a decision right now. Don't, don't put it off to future days. No. Today, today you say it. You say it in your heart and you confess it in your mouth. I want to have an encounter with Jesus. I want my life to be changed forever. Oh, Lord Jesus, why don't you all stand up right now? Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I've said many things that if what I've said, one or two or more points that is pertaining you and you want to get right with God and you want to, this is the desire of your heart, you want to experience Him more in a real way, in your, in your daily life, in your walk, in making decisions, making plans. Jesus is your captain. And uh, if, you, if you want to make that decision, Lord, I want to encounter you in a deeper way, in a special way, more than before. I want you to raise your hand right now. Yes. Right now, I see, I see those hands. Yes, 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 yes. 
Oh God, oh God, right now, let this Christmas be another milestone in our life. Not only for those who do not know you yet, Lord, but today they make a decision. They make a decision to know, to receive you. And for those that have known you, right now is the time as they raise their hands in agreement with my prayer, oh God. Lord, show yourself Show yourself strong. You are the God that is omnipresent. You are the God that is omniscient. You, you know everything. You are the God that is omnipotent. You are the all-powerful God. Oh Lord, I pray in agreement with your, with, with, with my brothers and sisters here in this place, oh God. Lord, that you manifest yourself in a special way. Even today, even right now, the Holy Spirit, you speak. That we can say, we can say in agreement with the angel, glory to God in the highest. Oh Just imagine this, that that person is in your heart. These Magi's, they were influencers. They were kingmakers. In other words, they set up kings and they dethroned kings. But they humbled themselves. They repostured themselves. Is it time for you to reposition yourself right now? I want to reposition myself. Now, not like yesterday, let alone a month ago. I want you, God, more in my life. Can I invite the whole musician to come forward? We can we can sing this powerful song. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh Jesus. Would you agree with me and with the word of God? We adore him. We worship him. <laughs> oh, oh God. Compared to the uh, Magi's, we are nothing. But yet the Magi's, they worship Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
I said, for you alone are worthy. Let's personalize it. We can sing it softly. For you alone are worthy. For you alone are worthy. For you alone are worthy. The Christ alone. One more time. For you alone are worthy. For you alone are worthy. For you alone are worthy. Even as even as we are singing this song of adoration, I feel very strongly that there are some of you right now that God touched your heart in a special way and you never, you don't know what it is. But one thing you know, a sense of peace. You know that there is a sense of hope. There is a sense of light at the end of the tunnel. It's just like, oh, yeah, uh, that is what I, what I meant by you encounter Jesus. God is touching you. God has spoken to you through the word and he's encouraging you. You are not, you are not ignored. You are not rejected. You are loved, you are special. He will heal your wounded hearts. Thank you, Jesus. And I know the presence of God is here right now. Presence of God is here. And when you go home, I want you to allow the presence of God to Fill your heart wherever you go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are awesome. You are awesome, oh God. You are awesome. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you feel like you are loved? If you don't feel it, let me tell you, whether you feel it or not, you are loved. <laughs> you are special Maybe even your mind said Am I? Yes you are Because the almighty God said He died for us He died for you God bless you Merry Christmas God bless you